Okay, now this is really going to finish up Proverbs chapter 1. And we're going to look at the topic of if you fear the Lord. Do you genuinely fear God? Number one, if you fear the Lord, you will hear his voice of wisdom. Proverbs 1.20 says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. You can see a great illustration of this when you drive by a street preacher quoting the King James Bible. He is another stop sign or roadblock on the way to hell. And if God didn't want sinners to get saved, then why does he call preachers to warn the wicked? A street preacher is wisdom crying in the streets. A, a gospel tract that's tucked in the card reader at a gas pump with the right gospel is wisdom uttering her voice in the streets. A yard sign that says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that men are going to read when they drive by, that is wisdom crying in the streets, crying for you to get saved. A bumper sticker on a car or a magnet that says are you saved is wisdom crying in the streets. Proverbs 121, she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their, scorn, in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So how long will the simple ones love simplicity? There are people who go through life, they aren't overly wicked, but they don't have enough sense to turn to Jesus Christ. They don't have enough sense to listen to wisdom. They don't have enough sense to read what the church signs said that they drive by on the way home every day. And how long will the scorners delight in their scorning? Hopefully they will get rid of their extreme contempt for the wisdom of God and His words before it's too late. Hopefully they will read the Holy Bible that is in the waiting room at the doctor's office and in the hotel room when they go on vacation and get saved before it's too late. How long will fools hate knowledge? Most likely they won't until they hit rock bottom many times. Fools despise wisdom and instruction because the fool has said in his heart there is no God many times. And that's because he wants to be his own final authority. He doesn't want to have to answer to the voice of wisdom crying in the street. He doesn't want to believe the street preacher who says that he is in sin. Therefore, the fool is ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Proverbs one twenty three: Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So if they would turn at his reproof, he would pour out his spirit and make known his words unto them. Right now they can't grasp the words of God because they're lost. And when you're lost, he, he's not going to make his words known unto you. In 1 Corinthians 2.14 it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It's amazing that the same God who made the world and wrote the Bible is someone that you can have 24-7 access to talk to about what he said in his book. And he even says that he will make known his words unto you. One of the greatest prayers you can pray is for the Lord to make known his words to you. So if you fear God, you will hear his voice of wisdom. So don't turn a deaf ear to it. Next, if you fear God, you will heed his reproof. Verse 24 in Proverbs 1, Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. If you fear the Lord, then you will listen to the call of reproof. In John 16, 7 and 8 it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So when you get saved, you took heed to reproof. And the Holy Spirit of God told you that you were a sinner in danger of hellfire. And you took heed to that truth by believing in the gospel. You showed that you had the fear of the Lord. Fear of being cast into hell one day for your sins. So you took heed 
to reproof then. You need to take heed to reproof now. If you're doing something wrong as a Christian, you need to realize that God can chasten you for it, and you need to get it. You need to turn to God, turn at His reproof. He says, "Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded." You don't beg to get saved. The Lord has His hand stretched out, saying, "Take it, take it. You're sinking. Take it." You know how you take it. You come to him as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel. Peter said, Lord, save me. And Jesus Christ stretched out his hand and saved him. He said, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But imagine the Lord is on a ship. Imagine you're in the water and you don't have to say, Lord, please, please help. You don't have to beg. He already has his hand out. He's just waiting for you to take his hand. And he'll save anybody that is willing to grab a hold of his hand. It doesn't matter who they are, where they live, or what they've done. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So, do you want to get saved? Then call upon the name of the Lord. And before the words leave your mouth, if you really mean it, you'll have already believed in your heart to salvation. But there are those who don't listen to the Lord. They don't take heed to reproof. And the same saved people don't fear the Lord enough to take heed. They'll read verses in the Bible against what they are doing and not listen to what the Holy Spirit says through His Word. And this shows that they don't understand how God works and they don't fear Him like they should. That's why He says to some people in verse 25, But ye have sought, but ye have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. So God can whip His people and whip His people. And if they still don't listen, then he stops chastening them. And then that is even more of a punishment because they won't have anything st trying to stop them when they're going down the path of destruction. And a lost person can keep jumping over the hurdles that God puts in front of him until he hardens his neck so much that he won't even think about God anymore or retain him in his knowledge. God will just leave him alone. Now, I'm not saying you can't get saved, but you can re reject God so much that you'll one day not even think about salvation. It's not that the opportunity isn't still there. It's just God and eternity are a million miles away from your mind, and you'll most likely die that way. But that shows you don't fear God. But next, if you really fear God, then you will honor His authority, power, and character. It says in verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. This is God talking to a lost man that has rejected him and mocked him and walked over all of his reproof. He says, I will laugh at your calamity and will mock when your fear cometh. If you don't believe that verse, then you don't honor his true character. You're letting TV preachers and Hollywood movies determine how God really is for you. You don't believe in a God that will laugh and mock you after you've rejected his reproof time and time again. But when it comes to a man who has rejected God over and over again, God will laugh when they fall flat on their faith. If, if God brings a tornado on their home, he will laugh when it sucks them right up off their property. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe the very words that God said and you don't honor who God is. It says in verse 27, When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, when those men at the second coming are hiding in the dens and rocks of the mountains, God is going to laugh at their calamity. They can call on God and shiver in their shoes, and God will mock when their fear cometh. He's coming on them like a whirlwind. And the second coming is associated with that whirlwind. In Revelation 1, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Have you ever been in a storm and heard that thing roaring and the debris and hell beating up against your house? 
It's going to sound a hundred times worse than that at the second coming. People's blood is going to literally curl. They'll be flat out dying of heart attacks. That's what the Bible says. The, their hearts are going to fail them for fear. Proverbs 128, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Now in this age we're living in today, as long as there is breath, there is hope. No matter how much you've rejected God, and no matter how much evil you have done, He will save you and keep you. But there is a coming, there's coming a time when this isn't so. Verse 29, For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. So there are people today who hate the knowledge of the truth. And 2 Thessalonians 1 8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants you to believe the gospel and come to the knowledge of the truth. Because in 1 Timothy 2 4, he says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Men would rather get knowledge of this world that is contrary to the truth. And that's what 2 Timothy 3, 7, that's why it says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In the tribulation time period, the Lord is going to send a strong delusion and cause men to believe a lie, all because they would not receive the love of the truth. They hated knowledge, and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12, it says, And with all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Do you honor who God is? Do you truly believe He is who the Bible says He is? Do you believe these characteristics about him? Do you believe that he will cause men to believe a lie? Proverbs 1, 30 through 31, They would none of my counsel, they despised all of my reproof. Therefore they shall, eat, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. They will eat the fruit of their own way. They didn't take the Lord's way. So now they have to eat the devil's fruit, which is pleasant to the sight as it was on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Or it's like the horse woman who may look good on the outside, but she will lead you down to the chambers of death. You fornicate with her and you'll eat the fruit of your own way. Possibly an STD. You give yourself over to alcohol and drugs and you'll eat the fruit of your own way. Debt, depression, prison. All the stuff that comes along with that. Why not choose the fear of the Lord? It will lead you on the right path. Proverbs 132, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. When foolish men become rich and famous, and the devil gets them, their prosperity destroys them. Even these men who are seen as spiritual, like T.D. Jakes, the man is a fool, and his prosperity is destroying him. Kenneth Copeland is a fool. The devil is blessing him with many years of wickedness and deceiving. And the Lord is allowing him to continue as a fool and as a deceiver, as a judgment on himself, and as a judgment on people for rejecting the truth of the King James Bible. His prosperity is destroying him. Look into his eyes and you'll see a devil-possessed maniac. Same thing for all the TV preachers. They are nothing but a judgment on the country because this country rejects truth. Proverbs 133, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So hearken unto the Lord God and you'll dwell in safety. Why choose the devil's way? Why fear man instead of God? You won't have to fear evil if you fear God because he is bigger than the evil. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if you're saved and born again, you do not have to fear because he's not given you the spirit of fear. You shouldn't fear anything but God. But this has just been a quick study 
and just examine yourself. Do you fear the Lord like you should?